So Republicans are flooding the airwaves trying to convince people that voting by mail or expanding voting by mail initiatives will lead to voter fraud. This, of course, is bullshit. It's an unfounded claim that was actually contradicted by data gathered from the Heritage Foundation, which is a prominent right-wing think tank and was a pretty big driving force during the Bush administration and even before then. It's actually where Newt Gingrich got the idea for the Affordable Care Act and that's where he used the Affordable Care Act to oppose the universal health care plan that was proposed by Bill Clinton when he was president and largely drafted by Hillary Clinton behind the scenes. It's also an interesting quick side note to see how further to the right the Overton window of American politics has moved just over the last couple of decades. So in the 90s, you had a Republican House leader saying, look, I'm against universal health care, but maybe we should consider something that's a compromise between our current shitty system and universal health care. And then 10 years later, a Democratic president signs into law the compromise. He advocates for the compromise and not a single Republican is in favor of it because they view it as way too generous. So that's how much to the right our politics have moved. And so if anyone who tells you that, oh, well, you know, the left is taking over, or liberals are taking over, no, 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 we're we nowhere near that. In fact, the right is becoming further entrenched. And the way they do that is by engaging in voter suppression, whether it's through voter ID laws or just arbitrary even just arbitrary aspects within those ID laws. So for example, you can show your gun license here in Texas, you can show your gun license at the polls and you're allowed to vote. But if you're a student, you know, a college student, you show your ID, eh, that's not valid, you can't vote. And that of course is baked in there for a reason because college students are more likely to vote for Democrats. You don't want Democrats voting and so therefore they can't vote. Gun owners, more likely to vote Republicans, so you want them to vote. And that's the way that works. So let's just dive into the data here. And I've actually included a the link to the study in the description box below. So it's interesting to look at if you want to pillage through that uh, data yourself. But anyway, so voter fraud in the United States is exceedingly rare with mailed ballots and otherwise. Over the past 20 years, about 250 million votes have been cast by a mail ballot nationally. The Heritage Foundation maintains an online database of election fraud cases in the United States and reports that there have been just over 1,200 cases of vote fraud of all forms, resulting in 1,100 criminal convictions over the past 20 years. Of these, 204 involved the fraudulent use of absentee ballots, 143 resulted in criminal convictions. Now let's put that into perspective. 143 cases of fraud using mail ballots over the course of 20 years comes out to seven to eight cases per year nationally. It also means that across the 50 states, there has been an average of three cases per state over the 20 year span. That is just one case per state every six or seven years. We're talking about an occurrence that translates to about 0.00006% of total votes cast. And so Oregon was the first state to give out mail-in ballots back in the year 2000. And essentially what was gathered from Oregon's data is that the following numbers apply. With well over 50 million ballots cast, there have been only two fraud cases verifiable enough to result in convictions for mail ballot fraud in 20 years. That is 0.000004%, about five times less likely than getting hit by lightning in the United States. And so this shows you that something like the weather, whether or not it rains or not, has a bigger impact on elections than voter fraud. Because whether or not it rains can have about a 5% difference, can make a 5% difference on overall turnout for a given election. So that is a lot more relevant than something such as voter fraud. So it's a complete non-issue. I mean, you're more likely to get hit by lightning. And you see these pundits on Fox News, on other outlets, hyperventilating over the prospect of voter fraud and how it's such a serious issue. Well, that's the thing. They never talk about their fear of getting struck by lightning. And, you know, if you have reasonable Republican friends, reasonable Republican family members, you should say to them, like, wait a second, this is a right wing think tank. And it shows you that you are more likely to get hit by lightning than there is for voter fraud to occur. Five times more likely, actually. So are you scared? Are you paranoid of getting hit by lightning? Does that even register as a top 
500, like I'm gonna be honest, even as a top 500 concern in your brain? No, it does not. So this is complete propaganda that's been debunked by other right-wingers that just happen to be a little bit more reasonable than the current flavor of right-wingers that have taken over our government. And who knows, they may change their minds, but that's something that's important to just put in perspective there. Because the thing with mail ballots, the GOP is against them because they do increase turnout. And like I said before, if something increases turnout, then they vehemently oppose it. And so that's something that I would bring up to your relatives or your friends who are Republicans that are of the more rational variety, so not the types to go armed into state capitals or the types to think that Costco requiring wearing a mask during a pandemic infringes on their rights. And yeah, it's all a farce. It's all been debunked and it's all done to keep people from voting, keeping people from participating in the democratic process and just shows you who Republicans are. I mean, you know, I talk a lot about how disgusting the Democratic Party is, but just last year we had 30 Republican legislatures passing bills that allowed people to run over protesters who were blocking their way. So essentially going against the First Amendment, saying that, okay, it's okay to kill someone if they're exercising their right to assembly, which is mentioned in the First Amendment, because it's for it's usually for a cause that we don't agree with. So that's completely fine. We don't need to give a damn about that. That's their overall mentality.